In today's video, we will discuss UGR and how to create a UGR calculation in Visual Lighting 2020. Unified Glare Rating calculations provide a psychological measure of the discomfort glare in interior lighting applications. UGR can be used as an alternative for visual comfort probability. For more information on UGR, please consult the following documents. UGR is based on observer location, viewing direction, room reflectance values, and the location and properties of products. This table relates UGR values to Hopkinson's Glare Criteria Scale. I'm starting with a project with an existing room and light products already placed and with calculated illuminance values to ensure that the product meets my light level requirements. Now I'll add a UGR calculation zone to determine if the design meets UGR requirements. First, let's create a new layer titled UGR North. As you can see by the green indicator icon, the layer is set as the default and anything I place will be placed on this layer. From the ribbon, select the Calculation Zone command, and in the drop-down menu, choose the UGR option. From here, you can either leave the default point spacing or you can change it. Keep in mind that, like all calculation zones, smaller point spacing will increase the accuracy. The height is pre-filled at the CIE standard 3.937 feet. 1.2 meters in metric, so it is recommended to use this value. I will name this zone UGR North, then place it in the design. Next, I need to define the viewing direction of an observer in the space. Left click to set the base point, and then left click again to set the destination point to define the viewing direction. This will be determining the direction that the UGR will be measured from. In this example, because our room is orientated according to the XY plane, I will draw my line pointing north. If your building is skewed, like this, you would want your arrow pointing north relative to the orientation of the building. A quick reminder that the viewing direction must be in a horizontal plane. If you try to place it at a different direction, you will see a warning message that the viewing direction will need to be in a horizontal plane. Now that I have the zone placed and the UGR viewing direction set, I can select Calculate to see the calculated UGR values. Notice that I have values and certain points that display NA results. These are points where the conditions for the UGR calculations are not met, so the program is unable to calculate a value. The points with NA notation will not be included in the statistics. Currently, Visual Lighting 2020 can only display a UGR calculation zone with one viewing direction. It is recommended to include at least two directions, such as north and east. To accomplish this, I will place a second calculation zone at the same location and select a different viewing direction. The process is the same that I used to create the UGR north calculation zone. I will create a new layer and change the layer name to UGR East. Note how the green indicator shows that it is now the active layer. I will create another UGR calculation zone by clicking Calculation Zone on the ribbon, naming it UGR East, placing the calculation zone, and setting the viewing direction to the east. I will calculate to see the calculated UGR values. Now I have two calculation zones, but because they are overlapping, it's hard to read the data. This is where creating the zones will come in handy. 
By left clicking the pencil icon twice, the layer and the contents on it will become invisible so I can review the data of just one UGR zone. Let's look at the UGR properties to help us visually see problem spots in our project. For this, I'm going to be working on the UGR East layer, leaving the UGR North layer turned off. Using the Properties tool from the ribbon, I will click on a calculation point to bring it into the Properties tab. From here, I'm going to check the shaded box. Now, I can see good areas in green, possible problem areas in yellow, and trouble areas in red. By default, Visual sets the values at 19 for the lower threshold and 23 for the upper threshold. You can change these values, but keep in mind that any changes you make to the threshold will be applied across all calculation zones in your project. It is not by individual zone. Now that I have the shading set, I'm going to save a view by clicking the New View button and naming it UGR East. Then I will turn off the UGR East layer, re-enable the UGR North layer, select it with the Properties tool, check Shaded, and save another view named UGR North. Now I can quickly navigate between the two views. The shading key will only be displayed if you have only UGR zones displayed. So if you have an Illuminous Calculation Zone enabled, be sure to turn that off via the layers. You can also convert an existing Calculation Zone to a UGR Zone in the Properties tab by using the drop-down menu, but keep in mind that you will have to manually set the viewing directions by adjusting the orientation value. By default, the orientation will be perpendicular to the x-axis. By setting it to 90, it will be parallel to the x-axis. Finally, let's review how to create a print page with the UGR calculated information. First, I want to start off with my illuminance values. I'm going to click on drawing, then plan, then place the drawing. Because we last had the UGR East layer on, I will click on Layers on the ribbon, turn off UGR East, and enable the Calculation Zone layer that my Illuminance values are on. Now I'm going to insert my Illuminance view to show off the shading and insert the statistics table. Now I'm going to create a second page. I'm going to insert a drawing, click Plan, click Layers on the ribbon, turn off UGR East, and then turn on UGR North. I'm also going to insert the UGR North view. Finally, I'll create one more page, insert the drawing that will already have the UGR East layer enabled, then insert the UGR East view. With UGR calculation now available in visual lighting, you can evaluate your interior designs to meet your lighting requirements. This concludes this instructional video. Please send any questions or comments to the Visual Support Center at support at visual-3d.com.